Hi, it's Rick here. Today I'm going to be talking about crappies. Now you notice I pronounced it the right way this time. It's not crappies, although that's the way we say it up here in Canada. In some of the northern states they say it that way too. I think uh, probably 50 or 60 years ago, some guy figured out just how great eating these things were and wanted to have them all for himself, I guess. So he started calling them the way it's written. Myself, I really got into filming crappie about 10 or 12 years ago. A good friend of mine, Jim, had a big boathouse up north and he gave me a call one day and said, Rick, you got to get up here. There are like a hundred fish under my dock. Now, Jim, not being a fisherman or anything, didn't really know what they were, so I really didn't know what to expect. When I got up there, sure enough, there were about a hundred big slab crappie under his dock. Now, it was pretty dark down there, so it was pretty tough filming, as you can see. It was a bright sunny day, but in all that shade of his covered dock, uh, it was it was tough. So I sent down a, a really fluorescent minnow here. It's like a Berkeley type uh, swim bait. A few fish started pecking at it and hitting it. As it is with crappie anywhere, it took just the right type of action to get them to come in and hit. And they would spit it in a hurry, knowing it wasn't a real minnow. You have to wonder, how quick do you have to be on the hook set to catch one of these fish? Only a few of them would actually grab hold and swim off with the bait. I sure learned a lot about crappie that day, I'll tell you. Now, I had a backup plan, so I brought a couple dozen live minnows with me. So I put one on the hook there, and it didn't really move around too much, but the crappie sure knew that it was real bait on there. It's almost as if there's an electrical field around live bait. Panfish of all species know when there's real meat on the table. Because it was so dark under the boathouse, and I knew that the quality of video would be kind of poor, as you can see here, I got Jim to open up the big doors on his boathouse and uh, to turn on the halogen lights that he has inside of the, the building. Then I repositioned the camera to look straight up so it would be a true fisheye view from their own perspective. Now on the left you can see Jim's dock and on the right it's the bottom of Jim's boat. And of course that's me there. And I have to tell you this was a really unique perspective. A real learning situation as well. Getting to see crappie and how they're acting from a close-up position like this. And it was a real challenge to keep that bait in front of the camera. With all that overhead cover, the crappie, they just didn't mind that I was standing right there looking at them. They're very comfortable in these type of conditions. Now I have to tell you, I felt like a kid in a candy shop that day. I got so many great shots of crappie, never got them before like that, and this was a real first for me. I think you could tell that by looking at my face here. Geez, I was so excited, I was actually chewing on my knuckles there. And Jim is standing right beside me, actually on the dock, and he's looking at the tablet there and seeing everything that's going on down below and uh, he was pretty amazed as well. Bear in mind that these are truly wild fish on a cottage lake. As a matter of fact, the lake is fished pretty hard for walleye and pike and bass, although not many guys actually target crappie. But these are certainly not pet fish at a dock or fish that are being fed. There was no question in my mind that day that they really go for that up-down movement of any bait. And they eventually get bored with what you're using. And it's time to switch to something completely different. I switched over to a What's It bug. I think Lindy made that thing, and I'm not sure if it's even available these days, but it's one of those uh, different type of baits that kind of looks like a crayfish or a bug or something, and they hit that for a while. 
Once again, the right movement made all the difference in the world. At this point, I think Jim was running up to his cottage to uh, heat up a fry pan. Now he doesn't like the fish, but he sure loves to eat fish. Once they got tired of the what's it bug, I went back to my secret weapon, those minnows. Man, they sure hit those things and held on to them. This was the very first time that I got it into my mind that I might be able to actually hand feed one of these crappie. Put a short length of line and a live minnow crouched way down on my stomach in between the dock and the boat, dropped the line down and sure enough a fish took it. I tried to squeeze in between Jim's boat and the dock and nearly got stuck there, but I got my hand in the water and yeah, they were a little bit leery of that big hand sitting there, but when I kept still, they came out and checked it. But with a lively minnow on the end of the line, they came real close. I mean within about two inches of my hand. One of the most amazing experiences and the first time that I've ever fed a fish by hand. Little by little, I got them to take it even closer and closer. Bottom line on all this is, when you find the right spot for crappie, you can get away with anything. Strange as it may seem, when I tried using an artificial bait, they wouldn't even come close to me. It had to be a live minnow close to my fingers for them to commit to that. They really know when it's real food out there. The real lesson that I learned that day is how important it is to find crappie in the first place. Knowing where to look is the big thing, but sad as it may seem, the next day I came back again to do the same filming and all these crappie were gone. Found them about a kilometer down the lake under another boathouse, but they're always on the move and you have to keep up with them. <laughs>